The question we hear this morning is political, though it's wrapped in religious terms. It's a question that boils down to whose side are you on, Jesus? The political lines have been drawn, and as the question is asked, a hush falls over the crowds as they wait to hear Jesus' answer. On one side are the Herodians. They are a secular political party and supporters of the dynasty started by Herod the Great, that Roman king of Judea at the turn of the millennia. The Roman presence in Judea was well known, felt, and lived by the citizens there. It also created tensions with the Jewish community who saw Rome's presence as that of an interloper or of a tyrant. On the other side is the Jewish community, represented in our gospel by the Pharisees. Those who believed that Judea was part of the promised land, it was God's country, not Rome's. If we remember briefly the events of Good Friday, and that Barabbas was released instead of Jesus. There's a side note here that Barabbas was actually imprisoned as an enemy of the state, that is, an enemy of Rome, because he led a resistance movement in defiance of the dominance of Rome. In the midst of this tension comes the question, is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not. What the question is asking is, is it acceptable in the eyes of God to pay taxes to the Roman state? That is to say, is it within the parameters of the law, the Levitical code? The crowd is waiting for an answer because it seems that however Jesus responds, there will be political ramifications. If Jesus says, yes, it is acceptable, he would be supporting the Roman state in front of the Pharisees and others gathered, and he would lose some credit with his fellow Jews, siding with the oppressor. However, if Jesus says, no, it is not acceptable, then he would be denouncing Rome and he would be cast as part of the resistance and seen as a political rabble-rouser or troublemaker. Throughout history, this passage has been read as Jesus establishing a separation of church and state, when in truth, it is a text about Jesus avoiding a political trap. The question could simply be, Hey Jesus, which way are you voting, Rome or Judea? As all of the constituents on both sides watched and waited for his response. This question, this tension, is familiar to us as we approach the 2020 election. Lines have been drawn, crowds are gathering, and the subtext, it seems, to every conversation I find myself in is the inquiry of which side are you on? So I look to Jesus. I look to Jesus standing face to face with the question posed to him. Standing in that moment, Jesus asks for a coin and then identifies rhetorically the emperor's face and title that are engraved on it. Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. Again, the question at hand is what side are you on, Jesus, Rome or Judea? And Jesus' answer is fulfill your civic responsibility and your faithful responsibility. The power of the coin Jesus is holding 
is that it is engraved with the image of the emperor, a denarius worth one day's wage, and money's worth is based on the trust in the system that it operates in. A coin outside of its context or country of origin can have very little value. It's why I use paper money from Romania as bookmarks here in America. Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's. Engage in your community. And give to God the things that are God's. Coins are man-made. Territory lines are man-made. So where do we see the things that are God's? In truth, we see the things that are God's whenever we look in a mirror and whenever we look at one another. There is a Latin phrase, and it's imago dei, which means the image of God. It is a theological term applied uniquely to humans, pointing to the symbolic relationship between God and humanity. We are the things of God. We are made in the image of God. We are creations created by the Creator. We are creators created by the Creator. We create cities and countries. We create art and music, money and economies. We create families and lives together. Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's. Engage with the communities we have created and the places that we choose to live. And give to God the things that are God's, ourselves, our time, our souls. As Christians, the call is to give our lives to God, to follow Christ, living lives of forgiveness, acceptance, peace, humility, and love. As we give to God what is God's, that will set us on the path to be part of the world that we have created, rooted in grace and the desire to hold, help, and support each other. My favorite verse in our Gospel reading today is the last verse, verse 22. It reads, When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. When our reading started, the Herodians and the Pharisees, these political rivals, asked Jesus an aisle-widening partisan question, trying to entrap him. His response, Be part of your community but give yourselves to God, was so profound, so poetic, that these two groups heard him, were amazed, and then left together, even if all that means is at the same time. That is my prayer this season, that we as people of faith hear the words of Jesus are amazed, and leave together as people of God first. People of God, who are then also active in our communities. What side are people on, right or left? I hope they are on the side of peace, love, and humility. I hope they are on the side of grace, salvation, and caring for one another. I hope they are on the side that remembers we are the things that are God's, walking in that light as we care for this culture that we have created. Amen.